Today we are doing steak. And you know, people are usually thinking of steak, they think of the strip loin or the sear loin. To those are confusing very often because there is different names throughout the country. Bone steak, the cowboy steak, so called and so forth. What I wanted to talk to you about is what they call chef steak or uh, second hand steak that people don't have you know, much knowledge of it. So this one people would know, this is a flank steak. Flank steak on the side of the flank of the animal. Two layer of fat, you have the flank steak. This is the skirt steak. And the skirt steak is actually inside the cavity, the thorax, and it, it is actually the diaphragm, which expands when the animal breathes. At the end of the flank steak, there is one on each side, there is that piece of meat hanging, which is called the hanging tenderloin. Yet one of my favorite too is that one here, which is the shoulder blade. And that shoulder blade here is extremely, this is absolutely stunning meat. You can see the marbling of, uh, of the meat is extraordinary. Uh, in New York, very often those steak cut right through like this in the market with the, there is a large, a very large, large sinew in the center of it, you see on each side. In New York, this is called chicken steak in market, you know. But uh, here I'm going to remove that thing from the center and make a steak with that saute, with shallot, white, uh, red wine, mustard, and so forth. So here, as you can see, here I have uh, skin on this side, and there is that piece of meat that I'm going to try to cut from the center of it. I want to try to follow that large sinew here. That I have here, as you can see. Now, there is a skin on the other side, as you can see too. So that, I will remove that as well. I tell you, I will give you a strip loin steak, any of the greatest steak, the so-called cowboy steak. I will rather have this, this is really good, but this is unusually rich and well marble. It's like the Wagyu meat, but this is American. American grown, beautiful steak. So when you saute a steak, I would say, see that piece would be perfect for two. And generous, it's about five, five ounces and all that, and that's plenty. Good, so we're going to saute this here. Of course, that would be perfect on the grill as well. But in that case here, I want to do it with a sauce. And in that sauce, I'm going to have some shallot. I have shallot right there. So we're going to... Uh, you can do onion, you can do green onion. You can do shallot. That would be more than enough for two. Uh, maybe mushroom. As you can see, those mushrooms. Don't wash your mushroom ahead, they get all soft. But if I have a lot of mushroom to use, when I'm ready to use it, I put that under water, I wash it too, take it out and use them. It's not that you cannot wash it, you cannot do it ahead, you know. So maybe I'll do that in a kind of julienne like this. Any old way will be fine. So this is one mushroom. Mm. Maybe a little more. Okay. This garlic in there, one clove of garlic is gonna be fine. This, and again, I cut the end of the garlic so that I can crush it, which really is the skin. You know, when you have a whole head of garlic like that, you smell it, you basically don't smell anything. By the time you separate the clove, stronger. By the time you crack the skin out, stronger. By the time you slice it to flavor oil, stronger. And by the time you crush it, as I'm going to do, you release two essential oil in that garlic. You see in that essential oil? Two oil which get together and get sticky too, and that's really where you get the taste of garlic. 
At that point, I can have a whole head of garlic roasting around a chicken, two, three head of garlic sometimes. You suck the flesh out of it, you don't even know you're eating garlic. Here, if you shove that garlic, if you burn it, the whole thing becomes acrid and all that. So you use it in a different way. So a puree of garlic here. Okay, that's going to go in my steak later. Let's see now, a little bit of olive oil. I can have butter too, but a dash of uh, olive oil. Salt, pepper. Again, when you do meat like this, you don't salt it ahead. The salt will get into and cure the meat and uh, draw out the moisture out of it. Okay, my pan is quite hot here. That's good, and that will cook a couple of minutes on each side. I'm going to have some mustard in it. I'm going to have a uh, little bit of flavoring in the uh, uh, Leon Perrin sauce. Maybe I have a bit of chicken stock here. And I even have some ketchup. Sometimes I thicken it with ketchup, or you can thicken it with a bit of starch, but uh, ketchup is good. So that's here. Yes, conventionally, often at home, I will have the steak, of course, on the grill. But small steak like this, especially that steak, steak, I like to do it with a sauce. Sometimes I plant mustard sauce. Sometimes, as I do today, a red wine sauce. I have here uh, ooh, a good cab. And of course, just in case it's corky, you never know. Better test it ahead, you know, when you use wine. Okay, I'm going to turn my steak now. You can see beautifully brown on each side. When you do a steak, when you do a roast, when you do any of this, realize that when you put a steak, or you put a roast of beef in the oven, exposed to the heat, the beef will contract. By contracting, it squeezes itself out of juice, and that juice goes toward the center of the meat. So if you have a roast beef cooking in the oven, recipe, say 45 minutes, whatever, you take it out. If you put it on the table, cut right through it, the whole of the outside is gray, like overcooked. The whole center is flabby, barely lukewarm. The meat has to rest, because with that process of constricting, you let that roast rest, the fiber up and again, the juice, the hemoglobin goes right to the meat and you have juice coming out in your pan. And the meat is pink from the first slice to the last one. This is not the case, of course, with a steak that side, but it still applies to it. It's also the fact that you may like it very rare, or you may like it, uh, you know, medium rare, or... So in that case here, as you can see also, I have a good, uh, pretty thick cast iron pan. And in that type of thing, I have a good heat transfer. That is, the juice is not going to burn. It crystallizes to the bottom of the pan. That's what we call glaze. And the process of deglazing is to add liquid to those solidified juice to create a sauce. So if you have a tiny skillet, like in stainless steel, where the heat goes through, you have a black spot right there. No diffusion throughout the metal. And of course, your juice is burned already. You do a sauce and it's burned. So equipment is important. Very important for the chef. Did I taste that wine? I forgot. It's gonna work out pretty well. Now here, I would think that this is cooked enough, that is for me, I will put there and you will see, just as I explained before, within one, two, three minutes, there is no juice around here. You will see the juice coming out, that liquid, that myoglobin will come out of the thing. I'm keeping that, uh, the liquid here, and I'm putting the, up, I'm putting the shallot and garlic in there and then my mushroom. Cook a couple of minutes. It's the type of uh, recipe that you do in restaurants you know, at the last moment. Saute thing like this. So this is resting. When a piece of meat is raw, you push on it, it's just mushy. As it's contracting, as I explained before, then it gets tighter, so it kind of bounces back, bounces back, and by the time it's well done, it doesn't bounce back, it's just hard, you know? And here I can see just by Pressing it, that it's pretty medium rare here. 
Okay, so this is sauté for one, two minutes. Maybe I will deglaze with a tablespoon of wine, at least. Half a cup would be fine. Now, you know, you want to reduce this a little bit to take the harshness out of the wine. I put a little bit of chicken stock to lighten it. Let it cook and reduce. The mustard I will put at the end, if you want to put mustard, that will use other thickening agent as well as a little bit of ketchup, a bit of sweetness thickening agent. This is for taste. If you decide to omit this, it's fine. If you decide to omit that, it's fine. There is, if you decide to thicken it with a little bit of arrowroot mixed with water or potato starch or flour, then you can do it this way as well. Yeah. But now, important enough, I want this to reduce a little bit. Let me test it. Yeah, pretty harsh for the time being. And to take a bit of the acetic acid in the wine, then you want to have a reduction to be left with the taste of the wine, but not much of the, the acidity. Dash of salt. Okay. I can see that this is bleeding a little bit. You can see that there it's starting running out of the steak. And you can see that this is the juice coming out of it. When you have a big standing rib roast, of course, you have like half a cup of juice more. And the color of the juice also will tell you how much it cooked. But one way or the other, the meat has to rest. Even a white meat like pork, or veal, again, it will get more tender if it rests a little bit for the meat to relax so that you can carve it. Okay. Well, we can. Okay, so you can see now it's reduced by half about, and we're ready to go on. A little bit of that ketchup will give me a bit of a thickening agent, a dash of sweetness. And the mustard, you can do it without the mustard, but when you put the mustard in it, you don't let it boil too much after the mustard. Okay, the sauce is just about fine now. Mm, yeah, dash of salt, a uh, dash of pepper, rather. Okay, I sh shut it off now. Maybe a little bit of chives to put on top. And as I say, those snake, the Snake River farm here, you can see the liquid now is out. It's really an extraordinary steak. So, glaze. Red wine sauce. And usually, uh, by definition, in the kitchen, if you do a steak, probably the most expensive steak is going to be a grill steak. Because at that point, you have to have a very a larger steak. By the time you start putting a sauce, something on it, you have a much smaller piece of meat. Here it is. A beautiful shoulder steak. Uh, from the Snake River Farm. And let's see the inside of that thing. Again, it's a question of taste, but you can see here. And is it tender? That butter, it's amazing. Mm. We'll taste the sauce with it. Mm. Take Marchand Vin. Marchand Vin, we call it the cellar of wine. So a, a, a steak with red wine sauce like this, called Steak Marchand Vin. Here it is, from the Snake River Farm. Thank you for watching. <laughs>